Welcome to the Embodiment Conference. This channel, Trauma and Social Change, it's absolutely the moment for that, isn't it? I'm Steve Hoskinson. I'm the founder of Organic Intelligence. I've been teaching in this area of trauma, embodiment, and social change for about 25 years. It's an honor, really, for us to be sponsoring this channel where we're going to hear a multiplicity of voice, all unique, all unique contributors to our collective understanding of how to move from trauma and support then social change. Our unique voice in organic intelligence has something to do with a koan that I'd like to present to you, which is trauma means unintegrated resource. And that's a koan, and if you'd like and are feeling intrigued about that riddle, uh, then tune in to the post-trauma system development course that we are offering here, the coupon code that'll get you half off on that is enjoy. Now, enjoy this next presentation, and we'll look forward to another meaningful time as we explore these topics, trauma and social change. Enjoy. You know, it's interesting kind of um, connecting. I, I was here in the conference two years ago. Uh, I was kind of kibitzing a little bit with Patricia. Uh, before and and uh, wow how how big it's grown um, it was kind of a a bold uh, venture uh, the first time around 2018 and this time around it's just huge it's it's amazing um, you know the, the, I, I I think that um, one of the challenges in something that gets big is how how do we continue to stay connected and feel connected together even though there's this large webinar format. So I'm really going to, as much as possible, uh, make this into an interactive type thing, right? So your voice matters, your voice is important. Um, and so I'm gonna really try and keep tabs on the, the chat and the Q&A um, you know, for us. So this is hopefully as interactive as possible. So, so the topic here is uh, healing trauma. And the theme is from fragmentation to embodiment. Um, so at least as I'm sitting here with you guys and, and uh, I, I can feel uh, those of you who are here in, in the front, front, front of the house, um, I'm also uh, extending out and uh, inviting uh, folks out there just to chime in in terms of where you're calling in from and um, yeah, uh, where, where you're calling in from and, and how you're feeling right now, right? Bogota, Colombia, wow. Um, ah, so some people can't choose all panelists and attendees. Okay, well, that's fine. Well, I'll try and be the conduit then, maybe. <laughs> I'll be the translator. Okay, so, 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 so this is an example of, uh, sometimes we talk in somatics about the body-mind split, right? So there's this kind of, okay, um, parts of our community here aren't gonna be able to connect with each other, right? So it's gonna be really through me that uh, we're going to be able to try and build a community out of these separate parts. But I'll just read off the list. New Jersey, Queensland, Australia, Santa Rosa, California, Vancouver, Mexico, so uh, Minnesota, so, so there's a lot of different parts uh, all around. Okay, Massachusetts, yeah, thank you. Bethesda. And, and as I name these names, these uh, places out there, I'm just gonna, oh, San Francisco went to JFK, right on. Uh, I'm just gonna invite you to imagine the world lighting up, right? Because there's, there's a bunch of us in this call. Uh, right now there's, like about 70 of us right here. Um, and there'll be probably people um, later on uh, watching, right? So including you too. But as I name these places, San Francisco, San Jose, Florida, to see if you can imagine the globe lighting up and see if you can get a feel of the whole of us, right? Um, and I'll just mention, uh, there's somebody from Florida saying that in terms of contributing not just a place, but a feeling uh, that uh, uh, Natasha felt feeling sadness about the ending of the conference, right? And hi, Miriam Berkeley, yeah. 
and hello from Ottawa, uh, uh, Miss Missus Agua, <laughs> Ontario. Okay, so there's lots of places. There's a whole flow of places. Okay. So sorry, Doctor Wan. Could I just I'd allow people to pick both the oh. panelists and attendees. So um, feel there free you to go. Give that a try. Uh, yeah, oh. kabam, it works. <laughs> so ask and ye shall receive, yay. Thank you, I noticed my, my own body, like I took a deep breath, because now I get to feel you and you get to feel us, right? Yeah, so if you want us to feel you too, even just where you are, um, yeah, kind of uh, put all panelists and attendees, right? And there's some anxiety about the US election, Right, you know, um, and you're also able to join the main room. So if you want to do that, just raise your hand, and we'll pop you in here too. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you're welcome to do that. It's it's warm in here, uh, or the the water's warm. It's the we're safe. Um, so uh, what can I say? So 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 I'm trying to demonstrate a little bit of what we do uh, when we are uh, working with. Uh, fragmentation. We try and connect the parts. We try and build connection and make the whole. Hi, welcome. Uh, welcome. So, and I'm just trying to take you in right now. I'm trying to weave together places and spaces and faces and feeling, right? And thanks for saying that about my warm and calming voice. Um, so, um, so we, we've started a little bit as like a larger group uh, that's just a bunch of like marbles, you know, in a bag. And I'm just trying to weave us together into something that's larger and whole, right? Um, sometimes there's this notion of um, kind of a, a group with a big G that's kind of its own uh, emergent organism or field right, this thing that kind of rises out of the separateness. And, uh, and sometimes we're just like a group that's separate. Um, and if you have a group that's united and connected and strong, um, that's a powerful thing, right? And sometimes trauma can break a group into parts, into fragments. So, all right. Uh, Let's, let's get a little bit organized and I'll tell you what we're gonna to do today. Uh, we're going to be, first I'm, I'll give you some um, uh, just theoretical understandings of what trauma is. We'll get uh, your guys' input on trauma. Um, and then I'll show you how it happens. And then I'll try and give you some practical tools about how to, how to heal and how to fix it. Okay, so that's on tap for the day. Does that sound good? Does that sound good? Yes, yes, thumbs up. Okay, thank you. I see you and yay. <laughs> okay, cool. So um, let's, uh, I, I like using uh, the whiteboard just because it's a little bit um, more alive sometimes. Oh yeah, that's a little happy face. <laughs> but um, so, so I'm gonna ask you guys, uh, what is trauma and or how would you describe trauma? What is trauma to you? Uh, and you can go ahead and type that in the chat. What from your perspective is trauma? What's trauma? And I love it when people include everybody. Yeah, fragmentation. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> okay, we were just talking about that. So fragmentation. Okay, great. Okay. What else? Violence, right, okay. Hurt, right, okay, yeah. Isolation, right, isolation. Paused potential, that's an interesting one. Okay, yeah, I think that goes along with isolation, hurt, paused potential, pain, right, hurt, shut down, that's good. Isolation, shut down. I'll, I'll just put it another check. The opposite of integration to the fragmentation. Like a hard drive permanently crashing. Okay. <laughs> Loss of safety, woundedness. Absolutely. Somatic memory of past pain. Wow. Okay. Um, so 
uh, losing oneself. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, so fear and isolation. Fear, okay. So all of these are great. Yeah, unprocessed experience, really good. Okay, too much, too fast. Okay, so that's what I'm, okay. That's, uh, I'm gonna headline that, too much, too fast. Sometimes too soon. And that goes along with unprocessed, right? Unprocessed experience. It's, it comes in so quickly, we can't process it. So sometimes there's something that comes in too much, too fast, too soon that we can't process that sometimes feels violent, right? That's what comes in. And, and it results in all these things that you're describing, fragmentation, hurt, isolation, loneliness, loss of trust, fear, losing oneself, right? All of these things happen. And that's kind of um, how things go, right? So from a uh, somatic perspective, and yeah, um, from a somatic perspective, uh, here's what it, the diagram kind of looks like, okay? And uh, I don't know how many of you guys have seen a diagram that kind of looks like that before, where this is like nervous system activation. Is this familiar to a lot of people or is this kind of new? Um, you can type in the chat and let me know. Uh, you've seen it before. Okay, so some people have seen it before. Okay, uh, okay, good, great. Dan Siegel, Peter Levine. Okay, you guys have been like hardcore, kind of familiar. Yes, wind of tolerance, yes. Okay, so we'll go, so this is a, a more advanced crew. So we're gonna go kind of quick then. Okay, yes, 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 yes. So a lot of yes, so we're a pretty sophisticated crew. Okay, so we'll, we'll speed through some of this. And then, um, yeah, okay, great. So, so the general model, uh, and it's okay if you, you aren't familiar, but um, we'll go quicker. And if you have questions, ask, ask them. So the model is basically uh, nervous system activation, uh, system activation. And how things are supposed to go is we're here uh, and then we are maybe calm down here and we're more activated up here. And as we go through the day, uh, if we have a task that's a little challenging, uh, we get a little bit more stressed, a little bit more stressed, and then we rise to the challenge. And then typically we're supposed to be able to come back down, come back down the curve. So we get activated um, and then we get calmed. Okay. All right. So, so that's the general model. It could be, I have a phone call and I'm going to work. It's kind of stressful, uh, but I meet the challenge. I complete the phone call and then I calm back down. All right. Now in trauma, what ends up happening is we pass, go past our tipping point. Okay. We're past our tipping point here. And then we're in this overwhelm domain, okay? So, uh, and then trauma lives here. Trauma lives in this space where, for example, uh, if the first time round I was activated uh, and there was a phone call, I could handle it. I came back down, that was fine. But this time round, I'm activated, the phone call comes, something, something else piles on my desk, there is a code red or something, uh, I can't take it, and then I go into overwhelm and that's too much, too fast, too soon, okay? Okay, too much, too fast, okay, too soon. And that uh, puts us into what's called hyper arousal. Um, and that's, uh, this, this is basically a trauma state, okay? This is one of the potential trauma states, okay? And since you guys know a lot of this, why don't you go ahead and let me know? Okay, so what are some of the characteristics of being in this hyperarousal state, okay? Uh, this hyperactivated state is typically called fight or flight state, okay? Vigilance, right? Vigilance is up here. 
Okay, panic, right. Vigilance, panic. Sweating, dilated pupils, heart palpitations, muscle tension, right? All this good. Yeah, overwhelm, heart rate increase, right? Okay, okay, so all of this. Okay, great. Good, adrenaline, cortisol, right? So there's, and there's freeze. So there's, absolutely. So freeze, sometimes uh, it goes by tonic immobility. Right, so there's a lot of kind of um, feeling like you're, uh, you're really, all your muscles are tense, but you're, you're frozen in, in place, but you're really on high alert. Yeah, somebody else who's writing on the screen. That's me, yay, <laughs> okay. So um, yeah, so that's uh, level one, uh, hyperarousal. Now, if, if you stay too long in this place, the system can't live up here. It's, it's almost too much. And then what happens? Okay, I feel like you guys know all this stuff already. <laughs> yeah, as in no slides. Yeah, absolutely no slides. We're, we're, we're going just with the with what is, with the aliveness of what is. It's just a more direct connection with, yeah. Okay, so, so if we spend too much time up here, what ends up happening is, all right, so this is where polyvagal theory, yeah, my, my pleasure, Roz, yeah, I, I'm glad to include you. We wanna create connection and, and community, okay. Uh, go into shutdown. Exactly. Right. So, so, so that's the thing. So if it's almost like your car engine overheats or something like that. Okay. Uh, paralysis. So yeah, shutdown. Okay. Shutdown. We go into shutdown. Exactly. We get shut down and this is paralysis. Okay. So it's, 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 this is, there's immobility here that's called collapsed immobility. Okay. Okay. All right. So, so, so the idea here is uh, here it's fight or flight or sometimes this freeze and here it's almost like faint. Okay. So um, sometimes you, you can think of people, okay, I'm here, I have a phone call, I'm able to manage the phone call and it works just fine. So that's this arc down here. Option two, I have a phone call, it's really intense, more and more gets piled on my plate, something really awful is happening, it's a code red, I can't handle it, my boss is yelling at me, everything's going on, I start to get into overwhelm. This is, this is really intense, my heart rate starts to go, my tension goes up, I start to panic, I start to freeze, I get really like overwhelmed, and then all of a sudden I start to dissociate, okay? I start to get go numb maybe, I start to go into shutdown, lose my body, right? Stop, stop feeling myself. Yeah, and so, yeah, collapsed immobility. I go into this state. Possums go, do this as a survival mechanism, but it's almost like, yeah, your mind stops being able to think, you disconnect, right? It's almost like I'm seeing it happen, but I'm actually not here, right? Or I stop, I stop, to, I stop feeling my own body. Frozen goats, absolutely, yeah. You know, and, and in extreme cases, it's just like the body goes limp or numb. Like people look like rag dolls that can just get thrown around, right? So um, that, that would be um, kind of uh, how that, uh, the body feels weak, right? Yeah, can't do what you feel like you need to do. One can live in this state. So that was a, a message that went just to all the panelists, yeah. Sadly, I mean, you can kind of half live <laughs> like, yeah, people, a lot of people, and this is where, this is like long-term, this is depression, right? So that's what they call it. If, you, if you're here long-term, that's depression. If you're here long-term, that's anxiety, okay? All right, so, uh, and then some people fluctuate back and forth, bipolar, all, all of these kinds of things, okay? So, um, Let's see, so, so there's um, these, from a nervous system perspective, and this is why they call it polyvagal theory, okay? Um, let's see if I can get 
uh, maybe a different color for the vagus nerve. Let's just make the vagus nerve uh, green. So polyvagal theory says that, so what makes the freeze happen? Kind of what makes the goats freeze? I, there was that question, right? Um, and uh, there's a, what's called a vagal break. Okay, there's a vagal break. So there's a, something called the vagus nerve. Um, it's the 10th cranial nerve. It's called the vagus nerve because it's root is from the word vagabond, meaning wandering. This nerve wanders throughout the nervous system. It enervates our face, our viscera. Um, and uh, it has two parts, uh, the dorsal vagus. Oh, soups, that's the wrong side. Sorry, the dorsal vagus over here, dorsal vagus, and let's, and then we have uh, the uh, ventral vagus. Let's try that again. Okay, ventral. Okay, so this is a little neurosciency, uh, but um, you can't see. Um, Marina can't see. Okay. Uh, so, uh, yeah, um, no worries. Yeah, 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 my pleasure. Uh, so a little off topic, but why, why is it titled theory? Not sure about that question. So, oh, it's written a little too high. Interesting. You can't, some people can't see what I'm, writing. Is that true? Written too high. Uh, okay, you can. Okay, so I'll trust that that, okay, you can, you can see it fine. Okay, so um, the main idea is that the reason why everybody is in love with the polyvagal, oh, you can't see the green color. Uh, okay, you can see as well. So p can people see uh, the vagal break word? Uh, Large letters, please. Okay, vagal break. There's a lot coming in through the chat. Yes, okay. And they're saying, you're saying yes to, you can see. Okay, you, I'm, I'm, or, or yes to large letters. Okay, F uh, smartphone users, it might be small. Yeah, you might have to catch it on, on okay, yes, you can see. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. <laughs> it, it, this is a really interesting thing because I want to carry you with me, right? I don't want this to be like, and, and this is kind of the message. Like, I'm kind of like the mind here, I guess. And you guys are the body if this was kind of that model or you're like, yeah, it, this is a relationality thing. Okay. So uh, the, the notion here is that um, when we're stressed, one of the things that helps us calm down is social engagement and the ventral vagal is part of that. So the, the vagus nerve, okay, the vagus nerve um, is, uh, is so popular because it's one of these things that developed later in our evolutionary tree and it allowed us to make use of social engagement and human contact, right? So right now, if I am nervous and I look at Roz, I can see Roz kind of blink and then smile. And when I see him smile, I relax, right? And then I am ah, a little calmer. So that's using the vagal break. So I could be in a stressful situation but I see kind of the smile uh, on his face and then I calm down and I'm back in my window of tolerance, right? Okay, now, so that was the good vagus on some level, right? The ventral vagal uh, cal calms me down like that. Uh, if, if, if I get too much in overwhelm, uh, the dorsal vagal kicks in, which is basically the emergency break, okay? And that's another branch of the vagal, cur uh, vagal uh, nerve. And that just sl slams us down into shutdown, okay? Uh, as far as substance use, uh, substance use is frequently a way to numb out, 
right? So we can go into overwhelm and we don't like being in overwhelm. So sometimes we use substances just to try and uh, numb this out. And it, it's uh, kind of create a defensive accommodation, right? Okay. Uh, so there's a question about why freeze is in the upper category, not down below with shutdown. So there's two kinds of freeze. There's tonic immobility and then collapsed immobility, right? And uh, the idea here is um, that um, it looks like freeze. If you see like a deer in the headlights that's frozen, it looks like it's very still and frozen, but its heart rate is going super fast underneath. So it's, it looks like it's frozen, right? But it's, its heart rate is going super fast, okay? Uh, so that's why it's still a hyper-aroused state, okay? Now, there's also a certain kind of, and, and the literature has changed over the years. Sometimes they used to put freeze down here, but you know, this is, a, this is a different kind of freeze. This is like collapsed freeze. It's almost like you're fainting, paralyzed, dissociated. So it's a little bit you know, different, okay? All right. So if I don't get to your questions here, I invite you to uh, type them into the Facebook group <laughs> and I'll try and get to them there too. So, so just recognize that I, I, we won't be able to get to everybody's, but I'll, I'm doing my best. All right, yeah. And fawning is a mixed state right, kind of where you're trying to appease somebody. So there's some social engagement, but you're also trying to be in a kind of a calm, uh, uh, you're imprisoned basically. So that you can have mixed states and there's variations, okay. So, so here's, so, so this is some of the theory. Now, if this is the theory about how trauma happens, where trauma comes from, how do we heal it? Okay, so let's get to that next and then let's do some practice. So you get to that, All right? But people, people mostly okay with this, yeah. Or people, yeah. Um, uh, yes, so uh, let me slow down a bit. Okay, so pe most people are understanding this uh, great so far, great. So ventral is activation and dorsal is calming. Actually, so let me slow down on that. So ventral, these are both breaks. These are both calming, but they use different mechanisms, okay? The ventral vagal calms via something called the social engagement system, okay? So ventral vagal calms uh, via social engagement. So that was the example for me with Roz. Uh, I look at somebody, uh, and they smile and I feel safe again. So ventral vagal is like, ah, it's, it's like the foot brake on in your car. It's like, okay, I'm nervous. The first thing I should do is I try, try to connect with people, right? I, I try and connect with people and I feel better, okay? That's, uh, that's deactivation. And then, but it's calming. So ventral vagal is calming, but it uses the vehicle of social engagement. Dorsal vagal is calming, but it uses the, the mechanism of just shut down. It's like all systems off, right? It's calming, but it's almost over calming. It's like kapow, down into, into this space, okay? So, um, so that's, uh, yeah, no worries. My pleasure, Leslie, glad I could answer that one. Uh, so, yeah, so the key is exactly to, as much as you can, use the ventral and not get to the dorsal vagal break. Exactly, exactly, yeah. Makes me so happy, you're, you're getting it. So, so the idea is, as much as possible, connect, connect, connect. That's what we're doing here. We're connecting, we're together, right? And when we're together, we can make it through, right? So the idea is, um, Sue Johnson has this nice quote, we're meant to fight dragons, we're just not meant to fight dragons alone, right? Um, uh, James Cohen has this experiment. We'll just take a brief digression here. Yay, thanks for the heart. Uh, we'll make a brief digression here. Uh, let me save this just in case people want it. All right, so brief digression, uh, but they did a study where, uh, when people walked up a hill that was steep, 
right? Super steep hill. It seemed less steep if they were with somebody else. Their experience of the hill was like, oh, this is less steep, right? Because somebody else is with me, right? They've done experiments where they put somebody in an MRI and told them, I'm gonna about to prick your foot. I'm about to prick your foot. And I'm not gonna tell you when I'm gonna do it, but I'm about to do it at some point in the next five minutes. Yeah, thanks for uh, echoing the quote. Um, they said that we're gonna prick your foot, but we're not gonna tell you when you're gonna do it. And their brain lights up in like fear, 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 okay? But if they're with somebody who's holding their hand, right? And the same experiment happens, just by them holding their hand, their, uh, their brain calms down, right? They're okay, all right? So, so that's, um, all of these things are using the social engagement system, okay? The ventral vagus nerve that helps to calm us, puts the vagus break, pets as well, all right? Pets as well, okay? So we're going to diagram this real quick, and then we're going to try and get you an experience of this. But you're absolutely right. Pets as well. And I'm going to invite people to, to write down and type in the chat what your um, resources are. That's the name of this thing that we're just calling, right? What are the things that you use um, to uh, calm your nervous system? And it can be pets, right? Or it can be people who are safe. Yeah, nature, yeah. Cats and dogs, the earth, absolutely. Trees make you happy. I love trees, right? Absolutely, flowers, right? So just read and type and, and just let that flow into you and just feel the words that people are writing, okay? I'm sorry, this is a little lopsided, but I hope you can forgive me for that. Cath, hot baths, music, water, walking outdoors, pillow. The name for all of these things that you've written, these are all called resources, okay? Resources, okay? And the idea is if this is your window of tolerance, what your resources do is they help raise your window of tolerance, okay? They raise your window of tolerance so that when you are up here in your overwhelm and it's too much, you actually are able to withstand it a bit more, okay? Yeah, this list of resources. This is a great list of resources. So step one in trauma treatment is find your resources, resource up, right? Kind of like install your resources. Movement can be a resource, absolutely. Okay, so uh, yeah, all of these things, totally, totally, totally. So all of these are resources. So yeah, yeah, go SES. So, so, so that's step one, uh, connect with your resources. Uh, and then uh, step two is work with implicit memories. So I'm gonna have to take a little digression here and we're moving pretty quick, but you guys seem like you're up to it. So this little diagram that I did before where we're just kind of walking up this arousal cycle and then hitting up here, it's actually a little bit different than that, okay? So this little dot here is actually not or you can expand it. And if you zoom in on that, it's actually what we might call a pentagon. And I'll describe what all of this is, okay? There's different models. Uh, some people call it a triangle, some people call it a square, some people call it a pentagon or an octagon, but basically it's the constituents of your experience, uh, which goes by the acronym SIBAM, and that stands for sensation, image, okay, um, affect, which means feeling, uh, behavior, and meaning, okay? All right, so let me explain what all this means. So if you are in that example, or you're at work, you get a phone call, it's really stressful, all of a sudden things hit the fan, there's code red, things are flying off the wall, your boss comes in and yells at you, it's overwhelming. And then all of a sudden like 
things, you're, you're in your trauma state up here, all right? What ends up happening is, um, well, normally you should have uh, a coherent experience, right? Normally you, you, you can sense your phone in your hand, you're feeling a little bit anxious, but you're okay. You have images, you can see the operating room, you know, everything going on. You, you're able to make meaning uh, about uh, things that are happening. Uh, and you're able to um, continue on in your action, right? Maybe you're kind of doing your notes, right? And making the phone calls that you need to make, right? And it's all okay. But once you hit your tipping point, your experience starts to fragment apart, okay? Uh, and that's trauma, okay? That is to say, you might be on the phone call and for whatever reason, it gets too overwhelming. Your boss comes in and yells at you and all of a sudden, you lose sensation in your body. Your body goes numb, right? That starts to fragment out. You stop feeling your body. And if it gets too much, maybe you stop being able to sense um, wh wh where, where you are. Like you just have an image of like, um, like a door slamming or a glass breaking and you don't know how, how to fit it in with other things. Or all of a sudden you find yourself crying, right? Or, or, or you're or, or, or um, getting really angry and you don't even understand why, you don't understand the meaning or you find yourself repeatedly trying to continue to uh, like, like rush down the hall and you don't even understand why you keep doing that behavior, right? So these things start to fragment out. It's like you get flashes of images, your sensations get stuck sometimes or absent. Uh, same with behavior, same with affect, okay? So, um, so there's all of this fragmentation that goes on, okay? So step one is resource up, and step two is process those memories, okay? Okay. All right. So how do you process those memories, especially if they're just fragments, okay? Because what if all you have is the sound of breaking glass and you don't know anything else, right? But you just are haunted by this fragment of a memory. There's reasons why these things get fragmented, having to do with the hippocampus and things not being able to be time stamped, et cetera. But basically you, you, you get broken into these fragments, okay? So all you know is that late at night, when you're trying to go to sleep, this image of a of breaking glass comes to you. Okay, that's a fragment of a memory. So what do you do? You resource up, you get with your pets, your people, the things that are generous and supportive of you. And you make sure you feel safe enough to, to be there. Or you, you know, maybe a therapist who's a good resource for you. Okay. And then in that state of being fully resourced, okay, so that you're not in overwhelm, you connect up with that sliver of a memory. Maybe it's just that image. Maybe it's a sense that you have in your body of a lump in your throat or a knot in your stomach. And you just let that resource come into connection with that, right? And so what can happen at that moment is something like this. Um, this image, which was at first just all by itself, right, an image of breaking glass. I'm just there with that image of broken glass, but I feel the resource of somebody who loves me kind of with that image. And somehow that image of that broken glass, all of a sudden I start to shake in my body. So there's a behavior that starts to happen. And then for reasons that I don't understand, I start to cry and I still don't understand it, but things are starting to connect up. These fragments are starting to come together, right? And then all of a sudden I remember, right? The meaning, oh, this is um, when my dad left, right? You know, and 
Uh, there's the broken glass from uh, the door that slammed or whatever it might be, okay? And then the fragments come together. These come back together and come out the other side, all right? Uh, as a coherent experience again, all right? So that's how that works, all right? So, uh, so you go into the feeling to access memories. Yeah, so you go into the feeling to access memories with sufficient resourcing. You have to have sufficient resourcing. Yeah, yeah. So that, that is one of the problems that most traumatized people do not have a capacity to get fully resourced. So step one has to happen before step two. That is super important, okay? Yeah. Thank you for loving this. Thank you. Sounds like EMDR. Somebody knows this. Okay, very cool. So we're going to do an experiment or uh, an exercise, which is actually EMDR inspired, actually attachment focused EMDR inspired. Yeah. Um, and uh, give you a taste or an experience of this. All right. So, so what I'm going to ask you all to do is to imagine uh, your resources. Okay, so imagine your resources and uh, we're going to install these resources. So let's, uh, let me uh, actually, why don't we, uh, I think I'm gonna pause the whiteboard and then maybe you can see me. Okay, so um, here's what we're gonna do. All right, oh yeah, lots, lots of people here. All right, so oh, I'm gonna ask you to uh, think about your resources. Uh, think about what your resources are. And frequently, um, it could be pets, it could be the, the categories in attachment-focused EMDR are things like um, mm, uh, protective figures, nurturing figures, wise figures, and a safe place. So those are frequently, yeah. Uh, loved ones, right? Uh, those are frequently the um, some some things that can can help support us. All right. So I'm going to invite you to imagine uh, these uh, figures around you. Okay. Yeah. Put your cats in there because they're soothing. Absolutely. So so everybody, go ahead and uh, let's let's do this. Maybe I'll even let's get freaky here. I don't know if this is going to be freaky or not. Let's see if we can make this work. Um, oh, I don't know if I can do that. Uh, okay. All right. So, uh, okay. So, so there's there's some functionality uh, that's that's uh, low. All right. Mm, okay. So, um, is there some way I can support you? Because yes, it, this doesn't have the same functionality as Zoom meeting. Yeah, there's some limitations for sure. Okay, that that that's totally fine. That's totally fine. So let's do it this way. Uh, all right. So, um, let's. Uh, we got gotcha. you, no, no problem. Uh, all right, so here we go. Um, all right, so um, yeah, whatever I want. So I'm just gonna invite you guys to, um, to just uh, relax a little bit and imagine yourself surrounded by your resources, okay? And it might be um, loved ones, could be pets. It could be somebody who you feel safe with. It could be nature. It could be the ocean waves. It could be music. It could be me, it could be my voice. It could be us. It could be this community, right? Soothing music and just let yourself feel this penetrate into you, surrounding you, filling you with 
care and love, letting you know that you are safe right now. In this moment, you are safe and that you are supported and that you are loved and that you have all the wisdom that you need and that clarity comes easily to you and that all things are exactly as they are. And from this place, this place of um, connectedness and resourcedness, I'm going to invite you to revisit a place that has been forgotten inside you. Nothing too extreme, but just a gentle hello to a place, maybe a part of you that has been fragmented out, right? It might be a part of your body that has lost sensation. It could be um, certain things that are scary to do that you have left behind. It could be a, a little child part of you that got left alone and forgot. But whatever part of you you can, I'm just inviting you to, with your resources, bring that here. Bring it here. And let yourself, from this place of resourced self, say hello to this fragmented part right? Connecting with that part of you that had been forgot, that part of you that longs to be remembered, that wants to come home to you. The parts of us that leave and the parts of us that want to come back and just inviting you to let yourself say hello again hello again to these parts of you, these parts of you and your body. Hmm. And do these parts that have been forgot want to say anything? Are they open to being seen? And if they are, can you hold them with care and love? Can you let them know that now it's safe? Now you have enough resources. You can let them reland and come back to you, come back to your body, come back to your being. Yeah, and if you want to, you can gently touch that part of you if touch is wanted, right? a hand on your heart or your shoulder right, or your belly, whatever part that has been left behind, just calling it back into you. Yeah, just like that. Yeah, and saying thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you to your body, to this part of you that maybe was forgot, maybe was fragmented out, right? and letting your resources, whoever you've brought to this place with you, letting this, these resources surround you with this part that was left behind that you're now bringing back home. And saying goodbye for now, knowing that you can come back to this place in space anytime you want. And in your own time, just slowly coming back to this shared space. All right. Yeah. So let's uh, stop that and pause that. And yeah, what was that like? You can just was there any fragment that you were able to access? Were you able to connect with your resources? What was that like for you? I'd love to hear in the chat, you know, and you can share. And sometimes it's helpful to even just whatever insight you receive, just to, you know, write it out loud. So it can be, I don't know, 
felt more fully. So full, so nurturing, thank you. Yeah, so comforting. Yeah, that's how it should be. That's how it should be. Soothing, hard to tolerate bringing it in. Resource didn't feel very strong. Okay, that, that's true too. So that's, okay, so that's where your work is, right? How do you bring in those resources? Soothing, feeling of integration. Interesting to see what showed up. Felt like a child surrounded by everyone I love and who loves me. Very creative, wonderful. It was scary. Okay, so there's mixed reactions, right? It's, sometimes it's scary to revisit places. That's why you want to resource up. You had other forgotten memories, but you felt safe. Okay, so that's the idea. You know, the more resources you have, the easier it is you can go. Yeah, yeah. Tears were flowing, but you were, uh, tears were flowing, but you were comforted by resources. Surprise that a fragment was actually a capable, strong part, like the puzzle pieces fitting back together. Beautiful. I love that. Brought tears to my eyes that you could welcome in safely with curious childlike wonder. So I'll just say like feeling this, <laughs> yes, Susanna, right? That's beautiful. Calm, soothing, connected with a child part you'd been with before. Not sure it helped to have resources. Okay, okay, totally. So there's different things that people are experiencing. That's totally fine. All right. So um, yeah, this is the general shape of the work, right? You know, uh, there's lots of details and nuance and, um, you know, footnotes and variations on this, but that's the general theme of how to kind of, you got to resource up and then welcome in the fragments and frequently with enough resourcing, the fragments feel safe enough to reland and uh, come home. Yeah, that's the shape of the work. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, David. Okay, so um, I, I think if I'm not mistaken, this is, yeah, kind of landing on time. Yeah. So, yeah. No, that's great. And, and th uh, thank you so much for, for um, you know, just such rich offerings over this hour. The time flies by, right? Uh, there's so, so we could spend much more time. So thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I do just want to mention uh, the next session in this channel is Nidhi Tiwari on intergener intergenerational trauma and resilience embodying social change. Um, you're, you're most welcome to come and continue the conversation um, in the coffee break section and the portal um, or to join the Facebook group um, to join the discussion there. Um, Thanks again to our channel sponsor, Steve Hoskinson. Um, and uh, I know um, Abby will is providing you with several links that, uh, you know, including um, uh, Somatopia and, and other links where you can get more information about uh, Dr. Wong's work. And I'll just, you know, mention that, um, you know, we're, we're very pleased to offer this conference live for free and free access to recordings for 48 hours. If you'd like to buy either this channel or the whole library to digest in your own time, uh, please consider that. Uh, I just want to let you know the price will double after the end of the conference. Um, so, you know, take advantage of that today. If there are professionals in the audience who are working with people who have um, backgrounds with trauma, and you are finding, um, you know, economic challenges in terms of purchasing, you can apply through the, the, the general contact email for the, the, the conference um, to get a discount, um, even up to uh, free uh, for the, the trauma channel. And I see Mark today because he's you know, really good at listening to the audiences is that he's he's taking in suggestions on Facebook right now to put together a sort of 10 session free pack um, for anyone who's, you know, dealing with trauma, um, wanting to support uh, people about that. And so a little bit of patience that 
as we, you know, close to wrapping the conference up, it takes us a little bit of time to get all those things coordinated, but, um, you know, raise your interest and we'll, we'll really try to, um, you know, uh, uh, get back to and accommodate you with that. And so I'll, I'll bring it back to you, Dr. Wong, if you could, you know, leave us with your sort of, you know, final word or top tip. Yeah. Um, for me, it's uh, when in doubt, uh, uh, let yourself uh, find and connect with people who care about you. Uh, yeah. Yeah, something about uh, let it in if you can. I'm, I'm letting you guys in. It's so beautiful to, to feel the love, even through the screen, coming, coming, coming this way and all around in community. So, so thank you so much. Thanks to you all. It's really lovely. Okay, spread the love, right? Spread the love. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I think I think that's it. Um, if you have any other questions, uh, you can. Uh, put it in the Facebook group. I'll try to get round to them. Um, and yeah, we'll see you around the universe. All right, you take care. Just to speak to Patricia's question in chat, there's several links um, to work with Dr. Wong. Um, so you can follow up through there to connect. Um, did you want to mention any other, any other sure. way? Yeah. Uh, so uh, those of you who are interested, um, there's a website I run called Somatopia. Um, I don't know if you can, uh, that's probably the best way to get a hold of me. Uh, I'm not sure. I guess I could. Uh, yeah, it, I, I run a website uh, called somatopia.com. Uh, and uh, if, if uh, I think uh, it might be in, in that pot. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, thanks, Patricia. There you go. Yeah, you guys are on it. <laughs> so that's where I live <laughs> in interspace. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. Great. Thank you again so much. Yeah, my pleasure. All right. Yeah, you take care. All right. All right.